Seraphim's chief investment officer. I'm one of the founders of, of Seraphim and Seraphim Space Camp. Uh, over the last six years, I've been responsible for building our portfolio of more than 20 space tech businesses, uh, which makes me, uh, to the best of my knowledge, uh, the most prolific uh, individual investor in space tech uh, globally. So I'm going to spend the next few minutes talking to you all uh, uh, about some of the, the key drivers that, uh, uh, from our perspective, mean that space tech represents one of the most compelling thematic areas of investment opportunity, before then explaining and providing a little bit of insight into what our investment strategy is and how we go about actually uh, undertaking investments. So I'm sure that some of this might be familiar to, to some of you, but just as a, a very brief recap, um, really what led to Seraphim Space being founded was that we recognized that there was a paradigm shift in the space economics. So what do I mean by that? What I mean is by combining the uh, impact of uh, low-cost launch through the advent of reusable rockets, thanks to Elon Musk and SpaceX principally, along with now uh, mobile phones being componentry being repurposed to create low-cost miniaturized satellites that can fit in the palm of your hand and cost tens of thousands of dollars. That is a profound change measured in two or even three orders of magnitude of reduction in the cost of putting things into space. So how will this manifest itself? As Mark has articulated, as a new digital infrastructure in the sky that is going to be delivering enormous, unique global data sets and universal uh, abundant connectivity. So just to put this in, in context with a little bit of a, an illustration, in the entire history of the space age, there have been somewhere in the region of 13,000 satellites that have ever been launched. We're now tracking in excess of 200 companies that collectively have ambitions to put up in excess of 100,000 satellites over the course of, uh, of the next decade. So you're talking about a potential tenfold increase in the number of satellites that have ever been launched in the next handful of, uh, in the next handful of, uh, of years. And that's a change that we think is going to have very significant uh, impact. How's that impact going to manifest itself? Well, if any, even a fraction of these companies is successful, what we're going to see is that this, this data and connectivity tsunami is going to be impacting every single uh, sector. It's going to change the way businesses uh, operate. And really at the center of that is uh, our view that there's going to be billion-dollar greenfield opportunities that are going to manifest themselves through this disruption. And our focus at Seraphim is to try and identify where that disruption is going to occur and then to invest into the, the, the leading companies um, at, at as early as possible to stage. So what do these, what do these new spaces uh, look like? Well, uh, as I was saying, really, characteristics are very similar to many other um, uh, startups in all parts of the tech domain. So what do I mean by that? I mean the ability with relatively modest amounts of, uh, of capital to really prove out technology. Crucially, the ability to iterate incredibly fast. Case in point, uh, Spire, which Mark's already talked about, um, five years after it launched its first satellite, uh, one of its most recent satellites had more compute power than the preceding hundred that the business had launched um, b before it. That's the rate of progress and change that you're able to, to see. Also, the kind of businesses that are emerging, they're software-centric. Yes, they have uh, hardware uh, as part of their, uh, their offering, but it's really the data and the software that is often delivering, uh, delivering value. So what you're seeing is the risk-reward profile of these innovative space businesses being very much in line with, with venture and growth investing, whereas perhaps, contrastingly, uh, old space slash traditional space, as it's more politely referred to, uh, perhaps wasn't such a good fit uh, a decade a decade ago. So what do we specifically look for in, in, in businesses? We're looking for visionaries, for those people that are trying to turn science fiction into, into science fact. What are some of the common attributes that, that, that we see? Well, we're looking for disruptors with outsized potential, people that have visions that are measured in multiple decades and have growth trajectory. One of the reasons that we launched Seraphim Space Investment Trust as an evergreen vehicle was to be able to stay the course of the journey with our most successful entrepreneurs as they scale over a very long time, time horizon. We look for businesses that are looking to solve big global scale challenges. Mark's talked about the, the importance of space in the context of, uh, of the climate crisis. We're very often looking for people with first mover advantages, looking to address these, these, these greenfield opportunities. So the nature of space is such that if you can get there first, your ability to build a competitive moat through both scale and technology can be very significant. We're also looking for teams that have a rare combination of, uh, of being both mavericks, willing to, to push the boundaries of what's possible, alongside battle-hardened industry insiders that have been there and done it before. Space is still hard. As already mentioned, we look for businesses where hardware is the tool, but data is the business, and that all of those things combined provide these businesses with the ability to develop a very deep competitive moat. 
So where are some, some of our, our, our particular areas of thematic focus uh, at, at the moment? So at our overall level, we're looking for high impact ESG centric companies that are helping to drive positive change. Three particular areas that, that that's particularly pertinent. Climate, which we've already touched upon. So many of our businesses, particularly those that are, that are satellite constellations, are, are, are playing to this. So you've got the likes of uh, Hawkeye 360, which is helping with uh, uh, legal piracy. Um, satellite View, so you'll be able to hear from Anthony, for those who get to meet him, about their ability to, to measure the, the heat signature of any building on the planet, potentially every few hours. Eyesight, that Mark's already talked about. Uh, Spire, which we, we've talked about, and, and likewise our most recent investment, Pixel. All of those are collecting unique data sets that can have a very central role to play in commenting the climate crisis. We're also investing in the digital infrastructure, both upstream, up in the skies, and down on Earth. So uh, Zona, which is doing GPS um, uh, through its own constellation. Uh, Isotropic, who you'll be hearing from uh, the CEO, John, uh, later. And Arkit, who uh, we'll have a video for shortly. And then actually, the sustainability is actually manifesting itself, not just down here on the planet, but up in our sky. So space sustainability is an incredibly important area for us. And we've invested into the three leading players in that category. So Astroscale and Deorbit, who you'll be hearing from today, and uh, one of our other portfolio companies, Leolab. So these are three areas that we have been actively investing in and we would expect to continue in forthcoming years. So how do we, how do we go about finding the right businesses to, to invest in? So ultimately, our playbook is really driven by information asymmetry that drives unique insights and off-market deal flow. How do we do that? We do that as a consequence of being a pioneer in this market, uh, being positioned at the center of the ecosystem and through the power of our network. So it's the force multiplier that we have from all the relationships with other venture funds, through our own Space Camp Accelerator that Rob will be telling you about, about the most successful entrepreneurs in the sector that form part of our team and part of our network. It's about the space corporates, the likes of Airbus and SES who are investors uh, in our funds. And it's our relationships with space agencies like the European Space Agency, uh, NASA and the UK Space Agency. All of those things come to bear to, to, to help us build unique insights about what are the dynamics within, within a market. We then take those insights, we map out all of the companies in every single subsector, and we then develop a thesis about what's going to win out in that market, and then invest with conviction in the team that we think has the greatest capabilities. So just to talk about how this model has actually manifested itself, Mark has already profiled uh, iSci to you. Just to give you a sense of what you're looking at with this multicolored uh, image here, this is actually change detection based on uh, iSci's data showing illegal deforestation uh, in the rainforest in Brazil that you can't you do with any other data set because the, the rainforest is always, <coughs> uh, is always cloudy. So how our model manifests itself in, in, in the case of iSci was um, that we have relationships with two of the largest incumbent players within this market. So Airbus and Telespazio are two of the biggest players in, in radar satellites, which is the area that, that ISA is in. So we were able to use those relationships to leverage insight into how this market was going to evolve to identify that ISA uh, was ultimately going to win out and have a profound impact on not just the SAR market, but the wider world. Next up, Zona, that I've, uh, that I've already touched upon. So, so here, we were fortunate enough to be able to identify at a very early stage a high-caliber team of ex-SpaceX engineers before they'd even formed the company. We then brought them onto the Space, uh, space Camp Accelerator, helped foster that business, and then ultimately, through sequential rounds, have stepped up our, our position. And lastly, Deorbit, who you'll be hearing from uh, uh, after, uh, after the break, who are doing in-orbit last-mile delivery. So what led to us investing in this business? Two things. Again, the credibility and track record of the, tr of the team. You'll be hearing from Luca, one of the very first original visionaries uh, in, in the new space ecosystem, who's been, who's been there at the forefront of this revolution from day one with a long-term multi-decade vision of where he wanted to take his business. The other reason that we backed the orbit was we'd undertaken over a period of a year, very extensive deep dive um, due diligence, looking at all parts of the, the, the rocketry and, uh, and launch ecosystem. We were able to speak to dozens of different stakeholders from within that market, and we concluded that Deorbit was uniquely positioned to essentially turn SpaceX's Ryanair analogous low-cost ability to get to launch to add a, a limo equivalent service to the end of it that you'll be hearing from, from, from Luca. Um, so I believe that that concludes my presentation. Mm -hmm.